Happy Friday to one and all the fantasy footballers. We're breaking down the rest of the matchups. We're going through the news and notes, talking injuries, who's in, who's out, and of course, our FanDuel budget picks. Don't miss a second. Today's episode is brought to you by Dolce & Gabbana's new fragrance, K by Dolce & Gabbana. K by Dolce & Gabbana captures the essence of a man in his element. He is the king in his everyday life, a born leader and effortlessly charming. He remains true to his roots, respecting tradition while embracing modernity. The fragrance is magnetic and bold, just like a true modern-day king. Are you ready to own your crown? Pick up a bottle of K by Dolce & Gabbana at Macy's or Macy's.com today. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, the essence of manhood. Welcome in. It's going to be a good one. We saw... The essence of manhood last night. Yes, we did. Carrying the ball for the Seattle Seahawks. Showing us what a man is. Hop on his back. If you're a ram, he'll take you for a ride. Welcome into the fantasy footballers. I was going to combine the words, you know, go Chris Manson. And then I realized calling him Manson. Not good. May, maybe not the way to go. No. That, that's also just like. An actual last name. Charles so like, Manson. Right. <laughs> He's out there absolutely <laughs> killing oh, it. Whoa, whoa, All right. Whoa. This show's off to a stunning start. Friday, October 4th. It's Friday, man. We're lucky. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> the most elegant of men, Jason, opening the show. A modern king. A mo Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I posted about Chris Carson this morning. With the hashtag Muscle King. I mean, we have a Lizard King. He has to be the Muscle King. Sure. I I believe it. I mean, even even uh, Pete Carroll in the offseason was talking, literally talking about how muscular he is. He's like, oh, that guy's like a superhero. And to say that about one of these people in the NFL when everyone is, yeah. is impressive. Does it seem like, I mean, maybe it's a contrast situation, you know? You try to stand by people to make you look better. Mm -hmm. But doesn't it seem like Rashad Penny's on the squishy side of things compared to Chris Carson legitimately? I mean, Chris Carson makes me look squishy. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> For a modern king uh, yes. such as yourself. Welcome in. We've got a great show. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Today's Foot Clan Friday winner is Cody Lee. Cody Lee wins a $55 <laughs> gift card to shopballers.com. We like to say thank you each and every Friday to a special Foot Clan supporter. You can join our football community, our fantasy football community, at jointhefoot.com. Get access to an extra episode every week and a whole bunch of cool perks. And so we want to thank everyone, including and especially Cody Lee, Congratulations. We've got some news, some in and out for you, injury news today, the rest of the fantasy forecast, so the rest of the week five matchups. Ballers on a budget on the show today, and you can stay up to date with everything to do with fantasy football in this show on Twitter at the FF Ballers, on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And uh, the website's the fantasy footballers.com. So more reaction to last night briefly. I think my takeaways from this game, first of all, it was a great one. Yeah, it was a great game. Wasn't the over-under on the game exactly 49 points? Yes. And it, the, the game was. I'm curious where you're going. Oh, right. it was 59. 59. There you go. Yep, I, I was did, like, I, they, they blew that out of the water. Yeah, I was quick to make that connection because the game was a one-and-a-half point line. The right. Seahawks were favored yes. by one-and-a-half. They ended up winning by one, and then math didn't work in my head. But, yes, they, they hit the over. Brandon Cooks forced from the game with a concussion. He had yeah. one run, one catch. Robert Woods almost scored. But the, the, the storyline 
on the Rams side of the offense, two players. Cooper Cup, 17 targets. Cooper Cup, to me, is a guaranteed top five wide receiver this year. And, Mike, you had so much confidence in him in the offseason. I was scared of the knee, but he's picked up exactly where he left off. Nine for 117 and a touchdown. Constantly, I mean, it's just so obvious. 100 yards, four straight games where right now for Cooper Jared Cup. Jared Goff wants to go is Cooper Cup. And when they're in a third down situation, a red zone situation. A fourth quarter uh, drive situation. He's always open. It's always Cooper Cup. Now, whether he hits him or not, I mean, it was 50-50 last night. Nine catches on 17 targets. But then Gerald Everett is being worked into this offense. This is, seven for 136. This is madness. 11 targets, which was the second most on the team. We heard in the offseason, and this was one of the reasons I hesitated on Cup returning to form as well, was the fact that this team was running more two tight end sets with Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett in the offseason. So I thought, hey, we're going to see some more Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks, maybe Cooper Cup's taken off the field to manage the knee. But Gerald Everett, is he a real thing? No, I, I, I want to say I do not believe that this is a real thing. I think this was a matchup thing with the San Francisco 49 or with the Seattle Seahawks. I, I saw some people talking about the matchups that Gerald Everett would be a good play going into this week. Clearly, that was correct. Now, if Brandon Cooks is gone, we don't know the, the status of him. He left with uh, a concussion. And so we'll have to see if he clears protocol. If not, then I think Everett, you got to pay attention. But, you know, all the two tight end sets, well, not, what happened the just, first three weeks when he was the wider, the tight end 47, 23, and 31? Yeah, but last uh, to his credit, last week against Tampa Bay, he had eight targets in that game as well. Going eight targets, 11 targets, it should raise, your, eye, it should raise your eyebrows because tight end is so difficult to find. Man, did he try to lose that game for them, though. He, Ooh, he was like boy. the winner of and the loser of uh, many plays. I mean, the the perfect pass from Goff that he turned into a nice interception, yeah. and then he almost fumbled the ball like the next drive. On the other side, Will Disley, 4 for 81, didn't score, but led the team in receiving yardage, was consistently uh, – he looks great. He's I mean, real. he made some great catches. Nobody had more than four targets, so the ball was spread around once again. I mean, Tyler Lockett – Four for 51 and a touchdown on an improbable back corner miracle pass by was, maybe the best quarterback in football. We were kind of talking about that. Everything's going to be viewed through the fantasy stats and the, yeah. and the statistics. Russell Wilson is allowed to do what this offense is built to do. They give him a certain amount of freedom, pass attempts. It's a rushing offense, 27 carries for Chris Carson. I don't know how you can execute better than Russell Wilson in the offense you're given. I don't know if you can play a quarterback better than Russell Wilson plays it in his, in this offense. So it, it's unimportant to make him number three or number four or number five, whatever. He, he was so impressive last night. They won the game. Four touchdown passes. Chris Carson was 27 for 118. Caught a touchdown pass twice. Twice, yeah. Yeah, caught the same impressive. pass twice. They actually, if you look at the stat line, Chris Carson had been consistently targeted on the year. There were three or four plays in this game where Chris Carson was the designed pass catcher of the yep. play, and it got broken down by uh, a sack by Aaron Darnold getting in the face of Russell Wilson. He couldn't target him on a wheel route. You had another play that was a screen designed to Carson. He couldn't throw the ball. So I still think they were trying to involve him in the passing game, but these plays were getting blown up. Otherwise, I mean, DK Metcalf had the bomb touchdown reception. I think you're going to see that here and there, but only three targets. Are you – changing your opinion on him at all after this game? I mean, this is, you know, this is more his skill set, right? Like, run a deep bomb. They've been using him in the red zone, and it hasn't worked quite as well. But he's a talented human being, right? He's 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 truly a an outlier of an athlete, and Pete Carroll's a great coach, and Russell Wilson's a great quarterback. So they're going to find ways to get him involved. The play design was incredible, too, because that was, that was a touchdown on a broken defense. If, if like enforceably by the play call, it, it really tricked the second. Day. Yeah, yeah. If Rashad Penny stands next to Carson and DK Metcalf on the sideline, oh, but it, it's, that's your biggest mistake right there, yeah, Rashad. Seriously. So it's one of those things where if 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 DK's out on the waiver and you need a spot start, and you're you're deciding between someone like Cole Beasley, who's just a target hog, and you're in a PPR league, or DK Metcalf, who 
could obviously have the higher ceiling. Metcalf can do the bomb touchdown. Uh, I still think I would gotta usually do the, go gotta with do the bomb. I, do the bomb. I still feel like I would Everybody go with a Cole Beasley on a regular basis. Like, to me, just DK, to get the targets. To me, DK Metcalf is just he's a, a wide receiver on the waiver wire that if the bye weeks hit and your bench isn't looking the way you want, he's fine to pick up and play. He's not a guy I'm really stashing though. I still expect him to emerge over the course of the season. We talked about this on the Sirius XM show yesterday. They're giving him every opportunity to do it. Now, if he doesn't make a play, you know, he should have caught a two-point conversion in this game. They gave him another red zone target on that play. Should have caught the ball. It's, to me, it just will be very difficult. Like Russell Willis, when we were talking about how great he was, he threw the ball 23 times. And Will Disley is very involved. They are being very intentional about drawing plays up for him. Four touchdowns on 23 pass attempts. Tyler Lockett is the number one wide receiver in the offense. Chris Carson, like you said, he still is getting designed plays for him, so it's hard to, unless you're hitting on the 40-yard touchdown, I just don't see the volume for Metcalf leading to a breakout this year. Do you, uh, what's your takeaway from the Carson performance? 27 carries, over 100 yards again. Didn't get into the end zone on the ground, but those are just a matter of time. You can't predict that. Yeah, I thought David that. Moore was going to get pushed out at the one. He ends up getting into the end zone on that play. Goal line opportunities are going to go to Chris Carson, no doubt. So He's the guy. He, yeah, he is the guy. That's the thing. Is like The United States government and Pete Carroll should both just get rid of pennies because <laughs> they, they, there's, they're, they're not that valuable. <laughs> I mean, Chris Carson <laughs> wow. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into in or out. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? Um. All right, quarterbacks, Josh Allen in or out. He remained in the concussion protocol Thursday, limited practices. I'm going to say in. I Today will be the, the tale for Josh Allen, but even if he's in, I'm not going to play him. I would say in, and I think if he is in, he's su- he he's a startable guy. Sam Darnold, in or out? Out. That's Officially. official, right? Yeah, yep. Gardner Minshew with the knee injury, limited. I'm going to say in. <clears throat> I hope he is in, so I, I will say in. Yes. Do you guys know how this segment works? Yeah. You have to predict in or out. In. Okay. James Conner at the running back position, in or out? I'm going to say in. The beat reporters have said from, from Pittsburgh are sailing, saying that even though Conner – and you know Juju and Vance are missing some practices. They're going to be good to go on Sunday. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going. I'm going to buy in. Say, Marlon yeah. Mack did not practice Wednesday or Thursday, but he didn't last week as well. I'm going to say in, in. Sunday night game though. Are you taking the risk? Oof, that's um, rough. You- yes, because I think that Naheem Hines is a good backup option if you want to stash him because of just what the game script should be. Tevin Coleman, in oh, or out? Out. All right. Damian Williams. In. He's in. practicing in full. Rex Burkett. In. Devin Singletary. Out. Don't think he plays. And no. even if he plays, you're not interested no, in him. No, not yet. Like, with that type of a hamstring injury, I need to see that you're ready to play again. All right, T.Y. Hilton. Sunday night football, another tough decision. In uh, or out? This is really tough. Uh, I'm going to say that he is in. He might be a really good example of why you put – like if T.Y. Hilton's sitting in your flex instead of the wide receiver position because you moved – earlier players into the wide receiver position, that would let you go from Hilton to Ebron right. in your flex in an emergency because I think Hilton's going to play, but at least you're covered. Yes. Right? Tyreek Hill, Monday Night Football. He's He's been practicing. I think they're going to give him another week. I'm going to say out. They, yeah, they have. It's it's not whether or not Tyreek Hill can play. It's can he survive a, a human being falling on him and, not, and him not being very, very hurt by it. All right, let's go ahead and go to Edelman. He'll play. Juju. Yep. Juju yeah. will play. Josh Gordon? Will play. Yes. Terry McLaurin. I he's <sighs> been limited in practice. I, I know he got a he got in like at least a session last week before being ruled out. I think he plays. I hope he doesn't play. <laughs> I mean he's worthless <clears throat> against the Patriots, or at least nobody's gonna start him. If he has a great game, it's going to be a shock to everyone. Just give him a week. You're not winning the game. Yeah, give, him give him a week, week. to rest. I, pre- I prefer these rookies to have the experience. I don't care. He could be out of your fantasy lineup. I want him to play in the game. Well, uh, sure. I'm not saying, like, bench him because it's New England. I'm saying he's hurt. He's coming through, you know, a soft tissue issue. You're not going to win. Go ahead and bench. Tyrell Williams, foot injury, in or out? He's difficult. Uh, I mean, you got the the travel for the game. I'm going to lean out. Yeah, I do, yeah. too. 
My is there is there a player that you would would you jump on a, a desperate Hunter Renfro play well, like there? Like JJ Nelson or something? No, 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 no. Renfro would be the one that I would. We know Derek Carr. He likes to keep it. You know, who I, I, I would I would go with and and still go with Darren the Walrus <laughs> because that's what people are choosing for Jason. Yeah, like I got Tyrell and Darren. Give me all the Raiders. I'm just saying, Darren Walrus yeah. is going to have 22 receptions if if uh, he certainly Tyrell could this week. Oh my gosh, you're right. He will. Uh, Jarvis Landry in or out? He cleared the concussion protocol. I'm going to say in. Yep. In. Michael Gallup. He's trying to play. I I think he gets in there. Christian Kirk out. Yes, definitely out. All right, tight ends. Vance McDonald in or out? Uh, I'm going to say Vance is out. I am too. Yeah. Mark Andrews in. Yep. And then Vernon Davis uh, uh, concussion out of your lineup. Yeah, he's out of the lineup. Game day alerts. Join the foot dot com. Sunday live one hour before kickoff. News and notes always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right. Yesterday. So if you're new to the show or unfamiliar, on Wednesday, we always cover the Thursday night game. Some people yesterday, I saw some comments. People were saying, Where, where's the where's the Rams Seahawks game? We always cover that the day before because we don't know when you're going to listen to it. We want you to have some time with that preview. Yesterday, we covered the Bills, Titans, Falcons, Texans, Ravens, Steelers, Patriots, Redskins, Cardinals, Bengals. Jags, Panthers, mm. and then the Buccaneers and Saints. Very disappointed in you there, Andy. You started off strong. I did. One breath, and I thought you might make it through with one breath, but you took a breath before the Jaguars, Panthers. And that disappoints you deeply. I didn't want to deeply. point it out, but you, you're right. It's got to be said. I bet you cool Andy would have gotten through oh, in one breath. Oh, for sure. These lungs are <clears throat> iron. Is that Is, helpful? <laughs> I don't Is know. Iron, are iron lungs an upgrade? I feel like that would be bad. It'd be hard to breathe. <laughs> You'd be much heavier too. These don't move well in and out, and then they don't restrict. I mean, yeah, no, you want no, not a good call. All right, Jets zero and three, Eagles two and two. The Jets are without Sam Darnold. The Eagles are fourteen point favorites at home. They got Luke Falk though. Great news. There's just really no way for the Jets to win this ball game. That's the truth. So I think you can play both Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders in this game. I think both of them are startable. Uh, Lev Bell on the other side will get all of the work. It will likely be inefficient. He is certainly startable. The Eagles' run D is awesome. Uh, they can be beat through the air, obviously. So if you've got Lev Bell, you're hoping for a lot of dump-off passes yes. in the PPR. I don't expect him to do a lot of work on the ground. I, I, I think you could most definitely I, – I paid up for the Eagles' defense – should be a great play against Luke Oh, Falk. yeah. Home run. Home run. Carson Wentz should be fine. You play Jeffrey. Are you playing any other wideouts on Philadelphia? Oh, man. Nelson Aguilar, is, he's the guy who steps up when everyone is gone. And then you saw as soon as Alshon Jeffrey were, came back, nine targets for him. He, he only caught three of them. But Aguilar turned into a goose. So I'm not playing him. Not pretty, yeah. Nine targets for Jeffrey. That was yes. pretty nice. Robbie Anderson... I don't think you play no. him. Uh, Jason made the point, okay, you can beat the Eagles through the air, but not if you're Luke Falk. Right. Yes, correct, 100%. Because the game plan won't even allow him to. Even if Luke Falk, the player, thinks he can, even if he really, really thinks he can, he's not going to be get, given the chance. Luke, not enough passes. Luke, teams. believe in yourself. Yeah. You can do it, Luke. You can do it. You can do it, you can do it Luke. And I know – Go get him, champ. Yeah, I know Kyle, you know, he he wrote in here, is, is Robbie Anderson a sneaky snart? I, I don't think he is. I would be terrible. He's I'd, a very good player, but you, you still are banking on Falk. No, the, the only jet that you could play in this game is Le'Veon Bell. You're obviously starting Zach Ertz. Otherwise uh, – It isn't a great matchup for him. I will give them that. I mean, right now the Jets are number one – in the league as far as fewest fantasy points given up to tight end. And you can say, well, that's four weeks. A lot of that's matchup, right? Like they played the Patriots who don't have a tight end, but last season they were top three. So this isn't just a small sample size. That being said, you're starting Zacherts. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one other thing worth mentioning, Deshaun Jackson wasn't in the in or out. He should have been. He's going to be out again this week. Mm -hmm. I have apprehension deep within my soul about Deshaun Jackson right now. I don't like – and I would love to be proven wrong. I've got him in a dynasty league in my league of record team. We saw him in week one absolutely dominate. He changes the game for Carson Wentz. I need him, want him out there. 
I'm scared because you're not hearing about progress on the abdomen. I'm worried about core injury, sports hernia surgery, something of that nature percolating. I don't want it to be the case. Just telling you the, the vibe I'm getting, and hopefully he's back out there next week. But it's made me think about trying to unload him on the promise of that week one as opposed to do the injury dance. Happy to be proven wrong. Uh, we had this question in here. Which green do you prefer, the Eagles classic Kelly green or the Jets Gotham green? Oh, Kelly green. Uh, I am the monster Kelly Green fan. Yeah, I, I love the Kelly Green, so I lean that way. But I know there, there was a lot of hullabaloo when the Jets unveiled their new outfits or their new uniforms. I love them. I, I love the green of the new Jets unis. The green is fine. I think the design is just too I, I, simple. Once I saw I it like on the it. field, I actually I changed my opinion a little bit. I was, Some, I was sometimes playing it can work. and I think that there's. I, that's how I feel about the Browns uniforms. Yeah. I, I love the Browns uniforms. People, yeah, people don't though. Well, the, I I like it because it's classic. Sure. The Jets don't look classic; they just look plain. Yeah. They you only become classic, classic when you start winning. That's <laughs> sure. how it happens. Vikings Giants. We're going to talk about that game first. I want to thank today's podcast sponsors, and we're going to start with LinkedIn. Uh, they want me to talk about my most rewarding job I've ever had. <laughs> now, it's this one. I mean, this job is the most rewarding job I've ever had, but I've had a handful of really rewarding jobs, and I feel very lucky for that. We hear from tons of people that want to go out and follow their dream, find that job that is rewarding to them. LinkedIn's got 20 million jobs for you to choose from. Jobs, everything from software engineers to robotics engineers. My son, my 10-year-old, that's in his wheelhouse right there, robotics engineer. Uh, you've got associate attorneys, HR managers, whatever you're looking for. All kinds of open jobs on LinkedIn. You can search for them. You've got uh, opportunities to change your career. And you got people on there giving great career advice each and every day, people hiring, people making introductions. Find the job that is meant for you at linkedin.com slash jobs. That's linkedin.com slash jobs. Find that rewarding career, the one that you're proud of. And we want to thank Roman to help all of us out there stop Losing our hair. Follically challenged. Uh, you think, Thank you, Mike. I got you. You know, a lot of guys out there, you know, they, they have the hair loss and they, they think there's nothing that can be done, but not our listeners. Our listeners know now that there are FDA-approved solutions, and Roman is the company that makes it very easy. You can do it for the comfort of your own home. On your computer, on your phone... You just you get connected with a doctor and talk to them, and they'll decide if treatment is right for you. If it is, they're going to you know, and it's a free online visit. Uh, you know, licensed doctors. If treatment is right, they ship it to you with free two day shipping. Roman is giving all of our listeners a free online visit and free two day shipping when you visit getroman.com slash footballers. That's getroman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. Get Roman.com slash footballers. All right, let's go ahead and get into this Vikings Giants game. Kirk Cousins, Daniel Jones, this game's in New York. Not excited for anything, me personally, on the Giants side of the football whatsoever. The Vikings defense has been in the upper echelon this year. Uh, they're pretty unforgiving, and they're the type of defense, the schemes that they run, the way that they play defense that I think is especially troubling for a young rookie quarterback like Daniel Jones. Yes, they won the game last week, but no, it wasn't a pretty performance from Daniel Jones. He finally looked like a rookie. Uh, we don't think Saquon's going to be back out there. It would help if he was, obviously full strength. But when you talk about Daniel Jones trying to manage this game against this Vikings defense, I think there are going to be some mistakes that take place. They don't give up very much on the ground. So Wayne Gallman between the tackles is going to be a problem, and then you're putting it all on Daniel Jones' shoulders. So I'm not excited about starting really anybody on that offense outside of Evan Ingram, who's a must-start. Yeah, on, on the Vikings side, obviously we had a lot of debate uh, yesterday on our SiriusXM show about Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen. Are they going to turn this around, or are, is is this you know what Mike Zimmer wants when he fired his pass-happy O.C.? And Stefanski comes in and runs the ball, and everyone's complaining except Mike Zimmer. 
And I, Dalvin Cook. Well, Dalvin sure. Dalvin Cook's pretty Dalvin into Cook's it. Dalvin Cook's like, this is pretty sweet, man. <laughs> What's the problem, Stefan? But I do think the squeaky wheel gets the gets the oil this week. They're, they're, Ooh, the oil, not the grease. Yeah, the you're oil. going oil. oil That's can. different. <laughs> oil can. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that a wizard? I don't of know Oz? that. Yes. Rev- I don't know that. Yes, rev- it's a wizard. That's a wiz- of Oz. Yeah. Sorry, the I'm not. Man. I'm not brushed up on my line for line. Well, I mean, look. If he didn't say that, he wouldn't have got the oil. Look, yeah. Squeaky Tin Man gets the oil. That's is oil the really going to help the wheel, though? Is the question we're asking because it needs definitely. It is. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank I mean, you. If grease can help, oil certainly can at really? least temporarily. Yeah, it's going to lube it up. Al Borland, can I get a nod over? There? Are we okay? Yeah. We're okay with we're the oil. Good. All right, move on. So the point is here, there's a lot of debate between whether they're going to continue this pass-run ratio or not. And I, they're certainly not flipping back to the beginning of last year. Like, that's out of the question. But I still am a firm believer that th- what you've seen so far on the pass-to-run ratio is an outlier, is, is, is at the extreme end of what they're going to do on the season. We're only a quarter of the season in, and I, you know, this matchup is one where – I could very well be proven wrong, right? Because they don't yes. need to throw the I, ball. That's what I was going to say. That's a good could be story, up. but they're probably going to run the ball 60% of the time again. That being said, we've seen a lot of teams, when you go up against a poor pass defense, just a poor overall team, yeah, you can have that narrative where, well, they're not going to have to pass. But a lot of times they get the lead by easily passing for touchdowns. Yeah, I, that's, it, that's what I'm saying. It definitely could happen, but – Mike, what else could happen is Mike Zimmer could stare Adam Thielen in the face while he's calling in the play call and say, "Run the ball," and then Adam Thielen just weeps. Yeah, like that—that's also in the range of outcomes. You mentioned yesterday's quick question, scariest start of the week, without question. Diggs is Diggs is moving towards a full bench for me. I know the matchup is nice. I don't know if he makes it on the field, and I don't know what it means when he's on the field. That he's met with everyone. If you listen to the audio of him talking, he admits it ain't right right now. There's frustration in the organization about Diggs because there's been some conversations about him doing this before. I just don't think we have a relenting coach. We have a coach that does things his way to the tune of, I don't like Case Keenum, you're out of town. I don't like John Filippo. see you later. If I don't like Stephon Diggs this week, on the field or not, it's not going to be pretty I wouldn't play Stephon Diggs personally. I uh, man, I I totally get it. But as as long as the rumblings settle down at least a little bit and Stephon Diggs is active, I will play him. And then just quickly to the other side of the ball, I get it that Evan Ingram is the only one you're excited about playing. But Wayne Gallman did have seven targets last week. He will he will receive volume there, so he's still an okay low end RB two play for me. All right. Wait, what, how did we start this show? Was it the uh, the king, the modern king? Yes. Uh, well, it's, it's a perfect... Modernity. Modernity. A, a word that I had never heard. Always. And you mean a word that defines us. Yes. I mean, it, that's who we are. We're modern people. And that Ooh, is why we play nice. games at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. Mm, yes, whites. <laughs> yes, the Bears Raiders traveling overseas. The Bears are three and one. The Raiders we, are two and two. We always send you our best. We send you our very <laughs> best. Chase Daniel, Derek Carr. Enjoy the for game. For the Queen. All right. The Bears are five and a half point favorites. The game is a 40 and a half point over under. Uh, the co- Derek Carr. The de- <laughs> Why? I shan't be attending. <laughs> I shan't be attending. Khalil Mack revenge game narrative. Oh, that oh. is true. He said, G- oh, he said it's going to be so bloody they had to get it out of America. <laughs> they said uh, it's a game I've been looking forward to. I can't lie. It's going to be a big one for me. Khalil Mack, in games where he's not looking forward to them, Derek he is Carr. also dominating. Derek Carr's going to die. <laughs> no, please. You know me. No, stop. <laughs> Don't send in the car is what we're saying. Don't send in the car. Don't send in the Jacobs. Don't send in the Williams. You can, however, send in. Oh, yes, you can. Go, 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 go. He's he's going back. We we have. We understand. He's going back. (laughs) Look, man. Yeah. I am the walrus narrative. This is a a Beatles reference. Beatles. Yeah, I get it. Oh, fantastic. I get it. Upgrade him. Upgrade him because of the song. Yes. Proximity to. Yes. 
Abbey Road. Yeah, nice. uh, yeah. No, what a tight end six <sighs> nonsense. Tight end two. Darren Waller's the only Raider that I'm very interested in. Yeah, and that includes look, Josh Jacobs. You have him on your team. You better hope he gets some passing volume. The Bears are giving up 16.9 points total to the running back position on the year, and that's going to be divided. Josh Jacobs, 54% of the running back snaps last week. If it's Josh Jacobs only getting the ball between the tackles, you better count You're, your blessings for 10 fantasy points. Yeah, I exactly. Jacobs is a player that I would love to be able to have on my bench this week. You can start him if you need to, but you're 100% right. He needs to get the passing work, which he has not gotten so far this season. Okay. And, and what's crazy is he's so good in the passing game. Like, from college, he's he's a talented pass catcher. But not a part of it right now with Jalen Rashard. Let me let me pose this question to you then, Jay, because this, this is a scenario that you could have. Do you play Josh Jacobs or do you play Devonta Freeman? Oh, man. Uh, I think I go Devonta Freeman here. Okay. You, you, you've seen him involved in the passing game. It both have poor matchups. I think I want the guy that has more involvement. I mean, most leagues now are half point or full point PPR. You're going to get more points out of All Freeman. All right, we're going to remove pass catching then. Go to a lower tier running back. Would you chase the matchup and the what we predict to be a stunning victory? Jordan Howard against the Jets. Or Josh Jacobs. You chasing those touchdowns? I think I'm chasing the touchdowns, All right. yeah. Yeah, I David Montgomery's a better start than Josh Jacobs in this one. Allen Robinson, Mike, you made him your start of the week. You wanted to give some confidence, a shot in the arm. Chase Daniels should be able to get enough done. The implied point total in this one has the Bears at 22 and a half and the Raiders at 18. The Bears have the the Bears defense is just too good. Yep. It's too darn good. And I don't think being in another country is really going to help Derek Carr out very much. No! It was a good performance from this team last week. I will say that. And a five-and-a-half point line with a backup quarterback in Chicago. I'll leave room for a surprise here, a low-scoring game, but I'm not very excited about the Raiders' options because when the great Dalvin Cook can't even run on this team, it's going to be trouble for Josh Jacobs. And, and we've talked about this, too, on the series show yesterday. Jacobs, this week overseas against the bears then the bye week these next two weeks are your buy low opportunity for josh jacobs if you believe in him which i do long term but not right now all right broncos 0 and four take on the chargers at two and two the chargers six and a half point home favorites a 44 and a half point over under the broncos defense already struggling on the season and now they lost bradley chubb one of their Ooh. best pieces on this offense it is falling apart quickly I'm sorry, Denver fans, but uh, out here in Arizona, we know what it's like to be winless, and it's no fun. On the Chargers side, we've had a lot of discussion this week. You guys have Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler as your starts of the week, and I understand why. The Broncos' defense already 29th in the league, 26.5 points per game given up to the running back position. I believe that Melvin Gordon will be playing the Justin Jackson role in this one. I think Austin Eckler... Is, wow, the far, is the far better play. That's strong. So as in Justin Jackson, like Melvin Gordon's going to touch the ball six, six times. to eight times? Uh, seven to ten. Yeah, seven to okay. ten times. I think that uh, – That yeah. means you would not – sorry. To, to, like Justin Jackson was only playable in games where you felt like the Chargers were going to blow them out. So if, are if, you benching Melvin Gordon? Uh, no, I would flex Melvin Gordon because I would flex Justin Jackson in this game. And we were going okay. to do it, and we did it against some, some bad running defenses – but the big point is, is throughout this week and yesterday on the on the show and for my own need of, of competition here, I said I would go Eckler over Gordon. You both said Gordon. I'm wondering if you're willing to put that one into the water yes. category. You're taking I mean, Gordon over Jason. Yeah, you have Gordon as Eckler. your start of the week. So, so I no, would say it makes complete sense. That being said, new information comes along as the week goes. I've heard Anthony Lynn talking about this game. He said he's 100% a part of the game plan. Last week he was only there in an emergency role, but that they are going to limit him a little bit. They're not going to get carried away with the carries. So I think this is pretty much a 50-50 split, and if I had to lean at this point, like I, I am my start of the week, genuinely, I, w I went to the doc to put Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. I I'm happy with – the point is I'm pushing anyone with either of these players. I think they're to both going to be fine. But I actually think Eckler is a better start than Gordon. That Like, I uh, this week I think it's probably 55-45 Eckler. Okay. 
So I guess no bet for no, you. Oh, I'll take the bet just because it's who gets the touchdown. Water bet. You're playing rushing touchdown roulette with these two guys. It might be pretty for both of them, so, like you said. But I, I just why not? think that I think Eckler will double up the opportunities that Melvin Gordon has in this one. And this is a swan song for Austin Eckler. This is not a prescription for the rest of the season. It will be Melvin Gordon's backfield. We yes. know that from both Anthony Lynn's mouth and Melvin Gordon's legs. So on the other side, I, I love Emmanuel Sanders in this game. I think he's got a great sure. opportunity out of the slot. Cortland Sutton is going to be facing some troubles on the outside. Yes. And so Emmanuel Sanders is definitely my pick at the position. If you have to go with somebody, you're also talking about a team likely coming back in this one, six and a half point dogs. Not excited for Lindsey or Freeman. Honestly, that split's annoying as it is, and this is a game where I guess I'd go Lindsey. <laughs> For, yeah. for one explosive opportunity yeah, here no, or there, but... I'm, I'm totally with you. Uh, I, w I would play Lindsey if I had to make the choice. Uh, I also agree that Emmanuel Sanders, I think he's a, a strong play. He, I, he will be... He's likely a strong play every single week. But to Cortland Sutton, it it could be tough sledding, but I'm still willing to play him as a three. See, it, like, it, I'm not benching Cortland Sutton. It's funny because, you know, Chris Harris Jr., we don't know which one of these guys he's going to be on, right? I mean, isn't it? Well, he would be facing the other team, Jason. Did you mean Verrett? Yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, Verrett. Er I mean, <laughs> no. Hayward. Verrett's the old one. Verrett is always injured. And Jason Hayward Verrett used to be their dominant you guy. You guys talking Dicka? Dicka? Mike Dicka. <laughs> Look, we got there. It's Casey Hayward. But, I mean, wouldn't you think <laughs> Emmanuel Sanders is going to be the player who gets the strongest coverage? That's no. my point. I don't think no, he'll follow him into the slot. Nope, he will not. Okay. All right, moving on. Packers, Cowboys. Packers 3-1, and one, Cowboys 3-1. and one. Cowboys, Packer game this week. has I've had the most trouble breaking this game down of any game. Packers, uh, 21 and a half points, the implied point total. Cowboys at 25, the three and a half point favorites, a 47 point over under. I'm having a lot of trouble breaking this one down because you have quite a few variables on both sides of the ball. Will Michael Gallup play? What does the offense for Aaron Rodgers look like without Devontae Adams this week? Dak Prescott not having Tyrone Smith. It's it, Who do you have winning this game? I'd love to know your top-level prediction here. Top-level prediction, I still have the Cowboys winning because I think where you beat the Packers is the running game, and this, to me, says that Ze Ezekiel Elliott will have a great game at home, even without Tyron Smith, you know, really doing work uh, against a, a weak run defense. The Packers' passing defense has been pretty good. Uh, this should be a close game, but you take out Devontae Adams – I, I think that uh, I think the Packers are going to have a hard time on offense. I'm taking the Cowboys, and I'll take the points too. I'll take them to cover. Okay. I, I like Aaron Rodgers is it. He's been living on an Aaron Rodgers name now for quite a while, and you take Devonte Adams out of this equation, it's going to be difficult with, with Geronimo. Even though you know Geronimo and Marquez, they're fine fantasy stars because they should see some volume. And Rodgers can always surprise on a weekly basis. But I think that Green Bay's offense is going to struggle mightily in this one. Aaron Rodgers, you know, last week, the, the quarterback two, a get-right game for Devontae Adams, uh, the, the weak Philadelphia Eagles secondary. And so, oh, he's back. But keep in mind, Aaron Rodgers, the first three weeks of the season was the quarterback 24, quarterback 19, and quarterback 25. Now he loses Devontae Adams. He He's, to me, a guy that... Like, I, I don't really love – I don't want to start Aaron Rodgers. He's a fringe start for me, too. Aaron Jones is the player I love the most on the Packers side of the ball because I think his baseline is going to be jettisoned forward by a number of dump-off pass attempts. Jamal Williams coming off a monster injury last week. Aaron Jones is going – I think Aaron Jones catches the ball six times in this game hmm. at, at a minimum. We saw after Adams went down, it was Jimmy Graham and it was Aaron Jones, so – I actually like Aaron Jones a lot on that side of the ball. I don't feel very comfortable. Like, MVS, you can play him, right? I mean... Yes, both yeah, him and Geronimo, you, you can play them. Yes. Yeah, you you can play all three, including Jimmy Graham in there as a third. The, the matchup is actually great. The Cowboys are weak against tight end. But if you get a lot of Aaron Jones dump-offs, uh, you know, a lot of Jimmy Graham type of targets, that's where I'm saying 
yeah, those players will be relevant, but those aren't the targets that you really want to to sustain Aaron Rodgers. Uh, 39 routes run by Aaron Jones in week four, which was the most in the NFL at the running back position. I think that was a product of the yes. situation with Devontae Adams, who's missing this week. now. And Jamal Williams missing as well. You feel pretty confident with the prognosis given – now to Adams where it looked bad and now it looks like maybe he misses a week. Would you go out and try to acquire Devontae Adams on the basis that last game started as good as a game has ever started in his career, the injury, or are you a little worried it's going to linger? As soon as the news came back mostly positive, and this was before it, it hit this upward trajectory, and recently he was a try and go buy Devontae Adams. Go go to a team if, if they're struggling and they have Adams and they need a player now, yes, I want Adams on my team. All right, let's. Uh, you guys good moving on? Yep. All right, Colts, Chiefs, Colts two and two, Chiefs four and zero, oh. Chiefs eleven point home favorites at Arrowhead, fifty six point over under. Well, hello. Give me, give me, give me. Yes. No, seriously, give me. I, I have Pat, Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> and I'm facing Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson got off to a hot start, so I need that. I need vintage Mahomes, Jason. Right. What are my, my odds? Well, the nice thing is this game uh, is not in a dome. And so what what we know is that in uh, Patrick Mahomes' career he has he has not thrown touchdowns inside of a dome. Right? Didn't he he had no <laughs> touch You're He's, on your own here, man. I'm not really following. Yeah, I heard that that was his first indoor game. Yeah. NFL La last, game last week was week. his oh, really? first, his first indoor, game. indoor game. And clearly he's just not the same Pat Mahomes indoors. <laughs> Uh, wow. we, yeah, we can take that to the bank. I, didn't just, hear, I thought you were going Lizard King narrative. I did. I did. We had heard some rumors oh, that funny. if Sammy Watkins is indeed the Lizard King himself, then he's had some problems in night games when well, he's not exposed to the sun. I mean, he's because he's got to moderate the temperature. Cause he's, don't get it Let's get real about Sammy okay. Watkins for a second, though. Let's get real. Okay. He's been terrible. He has been very bad for fantasy. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what? What do you do with him? I think you 100% play him. Play him. The, the question here written into our show doc as we prepare this thing is the saddest question ever in the way it's posed. Is this the week he doesn't disappoint you? Yes. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the story of the life of Sammy Watkins? I the mean, question we've asked since he was drafted. Fair. Is this the week he doesn't disappoint you? It's at home, a 56-point over-under with Pat Mahomes. You. You don't have you a choice, have, right? You don't have a choice. He's in the last three games. Take away the monstrous week one. In the last three games, he is on pace for 144 targets yep. through those three games. I, I know that it hasn't happened, but also he, he had that touchdown punched out last week. I mean, nobody's complaining if last week instead of three for 54 was four for 62 and a touchdown, he has a fine week. And so I, I think the amount of targets that are coming his way – you have to start Sammy Watkins. I'm, I'm all for the following the, the volume because yes. he's been leading the team in targets. I'm all for that. Um, it, it, it doesn't speak – like I don't, I don't want to give him credit for dropping a touchdown, but I, I'll give him credit for getting a lot of targets. Uh, he's running 70% of his routes right now out of the slot. Damian Williams will be back. He's a must start if he's back, right? 100%. Yep. Seen a lot of Damian Williams questions of can you start yeah, him. He you came to. back to practice – as full participant, I expect him to be the starter. Now, it does move Daryl Williams back to the bench, right? Yep. And then Patrick Mahomes obviously lined up to explode in this one, 11-point favorites. And I think like, Daryl goes back to the bench. Shady McCoy, to me, is still a play. Like The, the way it's – this is a different Andy Reid offense where he is using the two guys. Shady and Daryl were splitting work. Daryl was actually getting that passing work that, that Damian will be seeing. But I think that they're both perfectly fine to start this week. I, I agree with you on that. I also know what this Colts defense wants to do, which is to funnel the funnel the ball to the middle of the field, keep it in front of you. They don't want to give up big plays. Travis Kelsey, I think this is the breakout week for Travis Kelsey. It's lined up to be at a minimum. What do you want Patrick Mahomes to do? You want, you want him to score on 10 plays or one play? I mean, more time Ten. off. More time off the clock means that you are in this game longer yeah. against an explosive offense. And the, the Colts are actually really good at preventing those big plays. Whether they can keep up on the offensive side, I don't know. Now, Saquon Barkley officially ruled out. We do have breaking news on that. Officially ruled out of the game. Not that we expected him in. Sanity but you just, prevails. You just don't know. 
So what do you do with, uh, real quick, don't want to leave them yet, but Demarcus Robinson, McCall Hardman. Robinson, yeah, and then Hardman is just, he's that flyer. If you, you think a 50-yard touchdown is coming, which it certainly could. For... But Goose is you if he doesn't get it. Right. Jason, any thoughts on Hardman? Yeah, no, say, I echo the same thoughts. I mean, if you want a home run play, he is that, but he's hot or cold. I mean, you're not going to end up with a six for 60, um, you, you know, regular 10-point game. And DeMarcus was disappointing because he was four for 35 this past week. But once again, like Sammy Watkins, it was nine targets for Robinson. It was it was it's that indoor. The indoor narrative got to Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I had no I idea what either. you were talking about because Patrick Mahomes, I just assumed, has played in a dome game before, but he, he hadn't. Yeah. He'll he'll adjust. I think he'll really adjust. I, th he'll I make think it work. he'll be okay in his next <laughs> dome start. Now, Mike, you have Jacoby Brissett as your start of the week. I think that is – I think that you do have a wider range of outcomes than Certainly. maybe you – Okay, so you do acknowledge yes. that on the road at Arrowhead, but having to keep up. You hope T.Y. Hilton's out there to help out. He's been great when he's been active, but even head coach Frank Reich has come out and said, yeah, that bye week's just sitting right there. T.Y. Hilton's been fighting through re-injury. The bye week is sitting there next week. If he doesn't go, now I think he fights through and plays because that's traditionally what Hilton does, especially missing last week, got two weeks off. But if he doesn't go, that's still a possibility. Sure, and I'll say, to, speaking to Jacoby, I mean, three of the four games, it, it has worked. The other quarterback against the Kansas City defense, or yes, against the Kansas City defense, the one who didn't pan out, it was Derek Carr. But, I mean, Gardner Minshew was able to put up points, Lamar Jackson, and then recently Matty Stafford. So, it's yes, there it's a, it's a bit of a volatile play to go with Jacoby Brissett, but I think he's got it in him. And before we leave this game, I just want it known, Travis Kelsey – is going to, you want to talk about a get right game like the the matchup here is so perfect for him to destroy worlds i think he's going to have the biggest game of the year this week marlon mack if he's out do you play jordan wilkins mm. i mean right now the chiefs are giving up 22.4 fantasy points per game to the running back position i like naeem hines over jordan wilkins if mack misses the game yes but but wilkins would become a flex he would for you yeah because of the run heavy attack and the need to slow that game down. Exactly. That's how every team tries to start against the Chiefs is we're going to run the ball, keep it away from their offense, and it works for a while. So six carries it for Wilkins. It works until the second quarter when Pat Mahomes goes nuclear. The Cleveland Browns take on the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco on Monday night. The 49ers are three-and-a-half point home favorites. Vegas giving them a tip of the cap with this great start that they've had, and I think that they have every chance of keeping it going in this one. Two weeks uh, removed from their last game. Players getting a little healthier. Now, I don't think Tevin Coleman plays in this game, but Matt Breida, Raheem Mostert are uh, must plays. Is Baker Mayfield going to continue moving forward, moving this offense forward? We saw them impressively win on the road last week, uh, completing 67% of his passes last week. Looked a lot better. This is a tough matchup. Yeah. I, I believe in the 49ers defense. What we've seen the first three weeks of the season was they, they look like they're a legit great defense. And when you have two weeks to prepare with a really good defense, I am, I'm not starting Baker. All right, not starting Baker. You, you've got to start Nick Chubb, though. Yes, 100%. 20 for 165 and three last week. San Francisco – is only allowing 75 rushing yards per game right now, fifth best in the NFL. Yeah, adjust your Small sample, though. I'm, I'm adjusting my expectations and my hopes for Nick Chubb. Are you really? Yeah. Like, I, I don't think he's I, – I, It's it'll be a longer stretch to get him into the top five than to not, in which Nick Chubb should be a locked and loaded type of interesting, guy. Interesting, in interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely been impressed, like you said, with the, the run defense. Nick Chubb just seems to – be a machine right now. Yep. A machine. All right, Odell Beckham. You have to start him. Jarvis I mean, Landry, would you start him if he's active? I feel like I'm chasing those points if I start Jarvis Landry, but obviously you watch him last week, he was unbelievable. He was you know, and that was in their first win, so it worked, but I have a hard time chasing what happened last week when the first 3 weeks 
You know, he wasn't inside the top 45 wide receivers. He had fewer combined yards week one through three than he did in week four. And this isn't a great matchup. I, 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 would, I would like to pivot off of Jarvis, which sounds crazy after what happened last week. But I don't expect, you know, Odell Beckham to be this silent observer on a weekly basis. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what I saw the first three weeks over what we saw last week. Odell's in. Jarvis is not. You guys buy into Ricky Seals Jones at all as a streaming tight end play this week? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Really? Well, just look. I mean, Njoku had a role, a role that we were all excited for. It's three targets for Ricky it, Seals it was Jones. Down, it was downfield. It was. I mean, it was it, very busted plays. I mean, three. Like, if you had shown me, okay, Ricky Seals Jones got seven targets, I would say, okay, I'm maybe interested in, even though the Eric Ebron or, or Ricky Seals Jones. Ebron. Okay. Ebron. Uh, yes. Jason Witten. Ricky Seals Jones. Probably Witten for me. I'd probably go uh, upside. Of, of, Jason's of, of face Ricky. says it's Witten, so no. he's no, his face says it's Ricky. Yeah, my my face says no. it's Ricky. Okay. I mean, they just they just got Ricky Seals Jones involved there. Yeah, with a with limited potential, James. Or yeah, I must said Jamison Crowder. Uh, with Jarvis Landry banged up. There's opportunity there. They're getting. But Jarvis is Landry not banged. Be Jarvis is not banged up. He's either playing or he's not. And it, yeah, he didn't he officially yes, pass so he's protocol. So he's in. Antonio Callaway coming back from suspension. That's interesting. I think that helps uh, the offense as a whole. I feel like Brooks should be forced to start Dante Pettis every week because of what he's done to this show. <laughs> I think <laughs> he could be happy if he does that. Well, we have him ranked wide receiver 66, so we'll see. I said could. Could, could. <laughs> George Kittle, are you excited about this matchup coming off the bye? The Browns have been pretty vulnerable to the tight end. Is this a get-right game for Kittle? Are we going to see the Kittle and Kelsey – in week five that we've been wanting all year yes, long? Yes, this is this this week starts what you drafted these two guys to be. All right, like I said, Saquon officially out. Let's go ahead and move on. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Every week you can enter the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. Enter. You'll get a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to come hang out with us, see a podcast. People who finish first through fifth through the week get a DFS pass. It's a really fun way for listeners to come together. Get in on it. Compete. That's uh, fanduel.com slash ballers. My ballers on a budget pick. I'm looking for a bargain play. I think an interesting basement play, a cheap play, Mm -hmm. is Naeem Hines this week. Yep. Naeem Hines, I think, will uh, win the day in terms of snap count. At the running back position, he's as cheap as it gets at the running back spot on FanDuel right now, facing Kansas City. He's only forty eight hundred dollars, so I like Naeem Hines. I'm gonna go with Auden Tate. I like the, this one. The second Golden Tate. Uh, uh, look, Auden Tate over the last two weeks has been on the field. Like week one, he was only on the field thirty five percent of the time. It was some other bum out there trying to play the AJ Green role, and then they're like, "Wait, what about that giant man?" <laughs> <laughs> Should we put him on the field? And now the last two weeks, he's been on the field 88% and 91% of the snaps. He has 16 targets in the last two weeks, and he's played pretty darn well against two good defenses. Buffalo two weeks ago, he had 10 targets, six receptions, 88 yards, and was pretty good last week, four for 50. Now you lose John Ross, and you have the Arizona Cardinals matchup where you've got two bad defenses, two offenses that want to – play fast there should be a lot of fantasy points scored in this game and he is extremely cheap you want to talk ballers on a budget for FanDuel I mean he's $5,300 I like putting out you know Christian McCaffrey and right and the the great running backs of the world that are really expensive but I know what I'm going to get you can't do that unless you got some odd and tates in the in your lineup and they're the the hopes and dreams for Tyler Eifert this weekend that could just go to Auden Tate. Like there is a world because he's tight end size. Yes, and and he will run some routes out of the slot where the tight end has really killed the Cardinals. My pick here, it, look, sometimes when when you're on a budget, this is crazy. You gotta clip the coupons, and you're trying to find a player that no. that it, look part of DFS and part of Fanduel is you want a low ownership. The ownership I project to be very low, zero point one percent, and the point one is gonna be you. Listen, 
We kind of trashed him during the, the, the match of breakdown, but Kirk Cousins, he's only $6,800. He gets the Giants. Here are the quarterbacks that are cheaper than Kirk Cousins. Derek Carr against Chicago. No, thank you. Mason Rudolph gets Baltimore. No. no. Chase Daniel, he gets Oakland. Okay, maybe you can budget but, talk me but into that. Chase Daniel. Yeah, and then Luke Falk against Philadelphia. Like, If you are scraping the bottom, Kirk Cousins is where it has to stop. It, we talked about it. It is possible. It is in the realm of outcomes that their lead is built by just a real efficient touchdown scoring game. Maybe Kirk Cousins throws the ball 18 times but ends up with three touchdowns. Like That could happen. And his Would you build a stack? Would you stack him with Thielen or with Diggs? Thielen, I'm, I'm open to it. Cause I, I, I don't know Thielen's price off the top of my head, but it has to have dropped for, for what his expectations were compared to the beginning of the season. So if you're going for low ownership and you want to just feel real bad, Maybe, maybe you, <laughs> what it if you want to feel real bad, tune what? in to Ballers on a Budget. Uh, it, it could go either way. Week 5 <laughs> DFS podcast is out now as well. Search for Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. And uh, a reminder, the Fantasy Footballers leaderboard series. Go to fanduel.com slash ballers. Compete with us this week. A couple other updates. Jamal Williams remains sidelined at Friday's practice. I don't think Jamal Williams plays. That adds to the... Aaron Jones has got a guaranteed workload involvement in the passing game. Right. Devontae Adams still sidelined. Kenny Stills will be a game time decision. We do expect Michael Gallup to be back. Uh, that's the expectation from beat writers around Dallas. So this would help Dak Prescott be able to put up a, a better performance in that game. And like I said, <sighs> Saquon is going to miss. Saquon's out. Unbelievable. The four to eight week, four to eight week timeline is going to go into week two. <laughs> And then Jarvis Landry has cleared the protocol, as we said. He should be back in this game. And Adam Schefter just tweeted that Sean McDermott said Josh Allen remains in the concussion protocol. Oh, uh, and he ain't playing then. Interesting. Matt Barkley time, guys. Hooray! Tennessee Anything Titans. Anything less would defense. be uncivilized. Yeah, I was going to say Tennessee Titans time. All right. want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Todd Gurley signed jersey yesterday. $68.36. One of hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Good luck this week in week five. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Mike will be there one hour before game time. I will. See you then. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.